Once superficial venous reflux has been satisfactorily ablated, microsclerotherapy offers excellent results for leg vein reticular veins and leg telangiectasia. Good lighting and magnification are very important and it's important also that the sclerotherapist and the patient are comfortable. My own preference is to use a 30 gauge needle and a 3 mil syringe. Successful injection of the sclerosant into the telangiectasia causes blanching of the vessels. Various sclerosants can be used. Most popular are detergent sclerosants, such as ethoxysclerol or sodium tetradecyl sulfate. The injections are performed with the bevel of the needle facing upwards. I prefer to use the needle straight, though many sclerotherapists find it helpful to bend the needle to 15 degrees. The sclerosant works by removing the lining of the vein within a few seconds of the injection, and this initiates a healing process with eventual improvement in the appearance of the thread veins by fibrosis. It's important to inject small volumes of sclerosant under low pressure. As the blood returns to the veins, they look inflamed. Reticular veins, or so-called feeder veins, can be visualised using transillumination. Again, successful injection of the reticular veins causes blanching of the vessel. Ultrasound can also be used to identify reticular veins. An important part of the follow-up of these patients is to see them at two weeks and remove any retained coagulum by needle thrombectomy. This reduces inflammation and reduces the risk of brown pigmentation afterwards. Microsclerotherapy is the treatment of choice. Though many injection sessions may be required, typically up to three, with an interval of six to 12 weeks. Microsclerotherapy remains the gold standard for leg vein telangiectasia. Thank you for watching my video.